Recordings in progress. We're going to talk about objection handling. We're going to talk about objection handling today. So whenever I talk about objection handling, though, before I get started into the meat and potatoes, of you will, of objection handling, I always start with a point about objection handling. And I will forever, anytime talk about objection handling, always start an objection handling conversation the same way. And any of you that have been around me for any period of time know what I'm going to say. <clears throat> the best way to handle objections is what? What's the best method of handling objections? I never get one. Don't get them. <laughs> the best way of handling objections is to not get them. Well, Robert, what the hell are you talking about? Nobody knows. Here's the thing. Mike Ferry says this all the time. There's a direct correlation between the quality of your presentation and the number of, of objections you get. So before we get into handling objections, I want to take a moment to make sure that you are taking your listing presentation practice to another level because if you strengthen your presentation, you will get less objections and therefore won't have to worry about handling them. So before you start working on handling objections, work on the presentation. Always work on the presentation. So take your presentation to another level. You're pre-qualifying to another level. <clears throat> Asking questions. Everything up to the very end when they actually have an objection, get all that stuff down first. Okay, so I will always start any objection handling class with that one very important point. Okay, don't start with the objection handling learning. Work on the presentation first. <clears throat> but we're going to get objections. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about objections. So here's what I wrote down. You're not getting the business you want because you're not closing enough. You're not getting the business you want because you're not closing enough. Now, we've all heard these numbers before, right? Where only, you don't have to write these down. You can if you want to, or you can just listen. They say in sales, only 3% of sales happen after the first close. Only 3% of sales happen after the first close. 5% after the second close. 8% after the third close. 13% after the fourth close. And 81% after the fifth close. It's the chances you have to close a deal. You only have a 3% chance of closing after the first only 5% after the second. Then all the way after the fifth is when you get to the 81st, 81% chance you have to close the deal. <clears throat> so this is why we have to close often. And anytime you hear an opportunity to close. We talk about this with the script sometimes. Hey, this script might be long. You might have to go through this entire script. Or if you get a buying signal after the first part of the script, close. So give you an example. What's the first opportunity you have to close in a listing presentation? The one minute. The one minute. One minute in, I have a chance to close. Do you absolutely have to sell your home? Do you want to price your home to sell? Do you want to keep it on the market for a long period of time? Do you want me to handle the sale for you? Great. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? I just closed. Now, do most of them say, yeah, go ahead after the one minute or do they want to hear more? They want to hear more. Thank you, Marty Sella, for putting that in the chat box. Otherwise, we were just going to have awkward silence until somebody responded. 
They want to hear more, but at least you got the first close out of the way. As you're going through the process, then you have the second opportunity to close, which is based on what you see tonight, I'm going to recommend a price of $850,000. Will you list with me at that price tonight? There's my second opportunity. Sometimes they say yes. Sometimes they say no, because they want to talk about commission. They want to talk about, no, they want a higher price, X, 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 X. You're not getting the business because you're not closing up. Always remember that. So that's part of objection handling. Now let's get into objection handling techniques. I want you to write down, I want you to write down <clears throat> number one, agree. Agree slash approve. First part of objection handling is agree slash approve. <clears throat> agree slash approve. Never correct them. Never contradict them. Never disapprove. You're always agreeing. They give you an objection. You agree. You approve. First of all, you repeat. Let me back up. You repeat. You agree. You approve. Never correct. Never contradict. Never disapprove. <clears throat> now. Now. Let's be honest. If they say something that you know for a fact is wrong, is it easy or hard to not correct them? If you know for a fact they say something that's inaccurate, is it easy to not correct them? Or do you have to fight it? I think you have to fight that feeling. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there we go. Yes. You have to fight it. You know, I just want everybody to know. I don't know if you're familiar with how some of this process works. If I ask a question, <laughs> you are more than yeah. welcome to respond to the question that I ask. I don't know if everybody knows that. Okay, so just now that we're clear on how question asking works, maybe we should do a class on question asking and responding. I just imagine some of you at a listing presentation. Well, what's going on with the market? And then you just freeze, right? Go ahead and respond, it's okay. <clears throat> it's tough. You have to fight it sometimes. If they say something you know is wrong, you want to just go, that's not right. <laughs> that's wrong. Fight it. Hey, Robert. Yes, Michael. Can we use the Will Smith clothes? <laughs> <laughs> you can. You can. But don't call me to bail you out. Don't call me to bail you out. No way. You're on your own. Right? <clears throat> you have to fight it. Never correct Never contradict, ne never disapprove. Then I want you to write down, ask two questions. Repeat, number one. Agree and approve, number two. Ask two questions <clears throat> and then close. Steps of handling objections. Repeat, number one. Agree and approve, number two. Ask two questions, close. See, here's what, here's what you have to understand about objection handling sometimes people say objections because they feel like they have to. Yes or no? Yes or no? Do people sometimes just give objections because they feel like they have to give some sort of pushback? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Right? <clears throat> We've all done the same thing. We've all done the same thing. Anyone that's ever been to a, a swap meet a garage sale, right, of any kind. How much is this? A dollar. I'll give you 50 cents. No, a dollar. All right, fine. It was worth a shot, right? You just, okay, it's a buck, okay? You, you do that with, with anything. Contractor comes out. They want to do some remodeling. They say, all right, it's going to cost you about, you know, $10,000. You, well, you know what? I, I should try to get them down a little bit, right? I should try to maybe tell them I have a friend in the business. I should try to, 
you know, do something. So sometimes we, 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 they feel like they have to give you an objection, but a lot of times they forget about it. So don't, this is key for objection handling. Don't feel like you have to handle the objection immediately, first of all. And secondly, never jump right into why that's wrong. So let me give you an example. They, you're at the listing presentation. You sit down. Great. I wrote down three real important questions. And they say, well, before we get that, let's just get to the commission. We want to make sure you cut your commission. Don't jump into the, well, okay, let's talk about that. No, no, no. You know what, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we'll, get to, we'll, we'll certainly get to that. Let me just go through the rest of my notes. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Great. Number one, do you absolutely have to? And if you go through the presentation, sometimes at the very end, they forget. They don't bring it up again. And then at the end, they might say, oh, damn it, I forgot to ask about the commission. Oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. Right? So don't always think that you have to handle it right then and there. And then don't, what they say commission. Well, all right, well, let me tell you about the commission. Oh, hold on, hold on. Repeat, agree, approve, ask two questions, close. Okay, we're going to go over some examples on that. But always continue pushing forward. Never stop your presentation. Never stop your prospecting to handle the objection right away. Get through the presentation. A lot of times they will forget. I'll tell you right now, we're not going to list it for anything below 950. Okay, not a problem. I get it. So let's just keep going through the process. Do you know how buyers determine value? And then you go through the comps, all of a sudden they see the comps and then you suggest 925 and they saw the comps and they go, yeah, I guess you're right. 925 works. Happens. Happens all the time. But when you get in a fight, when you get an objection fight, that's when you lose. That's when you lose. When you get an objection fight, that's when you lose. So don't have, don't get right into it. So I wrote down here next on objections. Think like, this is what Ron Cronin used to teach about objections. Always think like a boxer. Okay. They're throwing punches at you. Those are objections. You just let it go. Let it go. Keep going. Keep going. Let it go. They're going to keep throwing stuff at you. You just got to keep going. You got to keep going. If you let each objection hit you, you're going to get knocked out pretty soon. Oh, they hit me with the commission. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, here's, here's the commission. Okay. Now they hit me with the price. Okay. Let me talk about the price. Oh, they hit me with a friend in the business. You keep taking hits. You're going to wear down. They bring up the commission. Let it go. Keep going with the presentation. They talk about price. Let it go. Keep going with the presentation. Can't keep taking hits. As Ernest says, keep control of the conversation. All right. So let's talk about repeat, approve, ask two questions, close. So repeat could be like, we want you to cut your commission. Oh, I understand. You want me to cut my commission. That makes a lot of sense. So let me ask you, when would you like your first offer? Well, two weeks. Okay, great. And you do want a proactive agent on your side, right? Right. Great. Then all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? See, I'm not, I don't have to answer the objection every single time. Repeat, agree, slash approve, ask two questions, close. Repeat, agree, ask two questions, close. Repeat, agree, ask two questions, close. Okay. As long as you can do this, you'll be unstoppable. So, all right, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's have a little bit of fun. Unmute yourselves. Come on, unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. Let's do it. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. Okay. I want Robert. everybody to say repeat on the count of three. Repeat. One, two, three. Repeat. 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 Okay. Say agree. One, two, three. Agree. agree. Ask two and then ask two questions. One, two, three. Ask, ask questions. 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 And, close, and then close. One, two, three. Close. 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 Ah. There we go. We got it. We got it. Okay. Now real fast. Repeat, agree, ask two questions, close. One, two, three. 
All right, now we're getting it. Does anyone Robert, have heart palpitations yet? I would like to share one thing. Yes, Iris. Um, Friday, I was meeting this homeowner. I, I, this mother and daughter, I have known them for over 20 plus 30 years. And they are super analytical. And they kept arguing with me about the length of the contract. So, and they said, so how long does it take to, to get home? So I answered the question. Then why, why, why not sign two months from um, two month contract? You just need two months. And I said, um, how did you come up with the idea get to sign two month contract? Oh, my tenant, my tenant, um, he said, um, the home can be uh, the, uh, you. Uh, uh, you're going to sell the home in two months. I said, "Oh, really? Your tenant doesn't even own a home. How does he know about selling homes? How many homes does he has he sold?" And then, <coughs> it's like, they stop and sign the contract. All right, Iris. Woohoo! Job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. I love it. There you go. Right? There you go. Okay. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Well, I'm going to have fun. You might not. I need a volunteer. Denise. Denise is going to volunteer. Thanks, Denise. Okay. So here's a couple of questions that you could ask, right? So yeah. I'm going to give you an objection. You're going to repeat, approve, Ask me two questions and close. Now you can come up with your own two questions or here are two, here are some examples of questions that you can ask. Okay. Okay. All right. So Denise, you know, um, you know, we, we just don't really agree with your price. We want to list it higher. So I have to repeat, like, repeat one of these questions. No, no, no. Repeat what I said. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. So, so you want to list higher. Okay, so great. You you want to list higher. And then agree. Uh, yes. That makes sense. That makes sense. Ask two ask two questions and then close me. Um, okay, so when would you like to have your first offer? Well, I'd love to have it in the in the next two weeks. Awesome. And would you like to would you like the sell, a selling process to be easy and effortless? Absolutely. Great. So now all we need to do is just sign the contract so we can give you what you want and the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Sign right here, please. Woo, there we go. Good job, good job, good job. All right, who's next? Okay, I can do it. Tess. Tess, you know what? Uh, you know, Tess, I, I just, I, I really want to, I just think your commission is too high, Tess. We got, we got to really talk about that. So I understand uh, you're concerned about the commission too high. So let me ask you this question. If I could get you the pricing you're looking for and net you the most money in your pocket, would you <laughs> sign the contract with me today? I would. Okay, let's go ahead and sign the contract. Sign well, ask, me, ask me one more. One more question. So aside from <clears throat> the commission, was there any other concerns you have? No, 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 just the commission. So just the commission. All, All right. right. Let's get started. Sign the contract. <laughs> Ask me one more of these questions. One more of that question. Okay. <laughs> yes. Do so you, you, you repeat it. You repeat, money? approve, okay, so ask two questions, close. You ask me the net. Ask me one more. So ask me another okay. one of these questions. Do, okay. So let me ask you this, Robert. <laughs> do you want to net the most money? Right. Possible? Yes. Yes, I do. Absolutely. So does that mean I close you now? No, no, no. <laughs> one more question. One more question. So if I can get your home sold in the next 30 days, will that cause a problem for you? Not at all. Now close. Okay. So why don't we do this? Let's go ahead, sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Sign the contract, please. All right. Good job. Oh, so you job. have to use the scripts. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, you might not. See, this is another way of handling the objections. You might not have to jump right into the script. You could just repeat, approve, ask two questions, and then close. Okay, got it. Okay. Somebody give me an objection. The home is not close to where I live. 
My my office is not close to where you, like you live. I mean, your office is not close to where I live. Okay, Tess. You know, <laughs> my office is not close to where you live. I understand your concerns. You know what, Tess? Let me ask you: If I could get your home sold in the next thirty days, would that cause you a problem? Uh, no, but how are you going to do that? You know what? That's a well. That's a really great question. And you know, what's more important to you: results or excuses? Of course, the results. And that's exactly why you're going to list with me. So let's go ahead and sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? Yes. Okay, great. Sign the contract. All right. All right. That's awesome. Repeat, approve, ask two questions, close. <laughs> Repeat, approve, ask two questions, close. Who else wants to go? I do. All right, Cherry. Cherry, you know what? I have a friend in the business that could always list with them. You know, that's a valid concern. And Robert, let me ask you, if I can get your home sold in the hold next on, hold 30 on, hold days. On, hold on, repeat it, repeat oh, it. Okay. You know, Robert, I understand you have a friend in the business. You know, we all kind of do. So yeah. let me ask you, if I can get your home sold in the next 30 days, would that cause you a problem? The approval, repeat it first. Right. Okay. Sorry, Sorry, the internet just cut off. No, that's <laughs> ideal. Yes, that's ideal. Okay, great. And you do want to net the most amount of money possible, right? Yes. Great. Well, in order to get you sold in the next 30 days and net you the most amount of money, all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Sign that would contract. be great. That would be great. Sign the contract, please. There we go. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. We're going. We're going. Come on. Who's next? I'll all go. Right, I'll do. Okay. Hold on. I saw there was, I saw a couple hands go up. All right, Ernest, we'll go Ernest yep. first. <clears throat> Ernest, you know, that, that commission's just too much, Ernest. Well, you're concerned about the commission. I understand. Yeah. Most people are. You know, if I could get you what you want in this for this home in the next 30 days, would that cause a problem for you? No, that would be perfect. Great. What would you like to have your first offer? I'd love to have it in the next two weeks. Perfect. All we have to do is sign the contract, then I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Wouldn't that be good? That would be good. Great. Let's sign the contract. Woohoo! Good job, Iris. Iris, your price is too low. I want to list it for more money. Robert, I understand you said you feel the price is too low. So, let, Robert, let me ask you if I could get your home sold in the next 30 days, would that cause you any problem? No, not at all. And would you like the process to be easy? and effortless. Oh yeah, absolutely. Terrific. All we have to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Sign the contract, please. All right. Now we're going. Now we're going. Let's do one more. Come on. Who else wants to go? Dave. Dave. You know what, Dave? I, you know, I, I have a friend in the business, so you know, I could always list with them as well. Oh, I understand that you have a friend in the business. Let me ask you, would you like this selling process to be easy and effortless? Well, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. And would you like to net the most amount of money possible? Yeah, yeah, of course. Perfect. Now, why don't we sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want? Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Sign the contract, please. Woohoo! Good job. Good job. Good job. Is this making sense? We starting to kind of get it a little bit. Oh, it's right? this is genius. Oh, it's oh. Really this is genius. I know, I know every so you often. You kind of just blow them off and move it right along. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Here's the thing, right? If you can get this down, repeat, approve, ask the questions, close. Repeat, approve, ask the questions, close. If you can get this down, you're going to solve 95% of your objection problems. Every so often, you will come up with someone that goes, but we didn't talk about the price. Okay. Every so often you will say that, but I still want to list higher. 95% of the time pfft, you're done because how can they argue with that? Well, you do want to net the most of my money, right? Yes. You want it to be easy and effortless. Oh well, yeah. Great. Sign the contract. Oh, okay. But it's a process. So that's why you have to make sure you repeat, approve, ask two questions, close. Don't jump ahead. There's a system to this. Now here's what I wrote down though. When you repeat, repeat it as the way they said it. Well, I think your price is too low. Oh, okay. I understand. So you want to list higher. That's not what they said. They said your price was too low. Now, I understand it's the same concept, but 
don't miss a listing because of a little detail. Oh, I understand you think the price is too low. That makes sense, right? Well, I have a friend in the business. Oh, so you know someone who's a real estate agent. Don't do that. That's not what they said. They said they had a friend in the business. Can you please put those questions back up? Why? Yes, I can. And what I will also do is just share this in the chat box. Thank you. Okay. So say it the way that they said it. Okay. Say it the way that they said it. That's the key. Because if you say it the way they said it, they also feel like you're what? Listening. Listening. They're being heard. Acknowledging. Yes. They're, yeah. You're be, they're being acknowledged. I'm listening. I'm hearing. I'm acknowledging your pain. Because an objection to them, it's a pain, it's a frustration, it's an irritation. And by repeating it back to them, it's like, I hear you. I acknowledge your pain. I acknowledge your frustration. And, and then you're approving going, and I get it. Now, you're not saying it with that tone, but by doing it that way, you're going, God, I feel your pain and I get it. And then let me ask you two questions and then close on this. All right? That's the key. That's the key to all of this. Now, those are just sample questions you can ask. If you want to come up with your own, you're more than welcome to. But if you could just get the, for me, my biggest strength in sales is objection handling. That's my thing. Okay. It's just, I am not good at a lot of things. Okay. But I, in objection handling, I, I done, that's my thing. So we could do this all day and I could just follow this procedure and you, we could do this for like four or five hours and you wouldn't get me once. That's not me bragging or being egotistical of like, look how great I am. That's just me saying, if you get this down, that's, you could do the same exact thing. Okay. Have you ever, who here has ever gone to see Ron Cronin speak at any of the Mike Ferry events? Okay. So you've seen probably it. seen him do this where he walks around and just says, give me an objection. And he just walks around and then, you know, cause Ron, cause he's kind of a character. He's like, next, next, you know, he does this, right? Like he, it's just the same process. It's the same process. Okay. Now, if you're handling objections for like four or five hours at a listing presentation, you have another problem. Okay. But the point is that's, that's just getting the system down, right? Getting the system down. And here's the thing. When you go through these questions, as far as ask two questions closed, you could, if you find two questions that really work, just use those two because you're not using, it's not like, well, I'm going on a different listing presentation. I can't use the same questions. Okay. If you find two that work, just use those, but get that down. Okay. So there you go. All right. What I want to go over next on advanced objection handling, a couple things that you can do that separate you from your competition that separate you from your competition in terms of commission and also friend in the business, what you do differently, things along those lines. So I want you to write this down. Schedule. Schedule. First of all, have a schedule. Second of all, print it out. Third, bring it to the listing presentation. Second, a specific updated plan of action. Put it together, print it out, bring it to the listing presentation. Third, a list of all the affiliates with their names, their titles, their companies, their phone numbers, their emails, and what they do. Put it together, print it out, bring it to a listing presentation. So what is that? Your title rep, your escrow officer, your transaction coordinator, your, you know, the insurance person that they could call, a warranty person that they could call, a lender that they could call, anyone who's involved. If you have, an, if you have your own assistant, whatever the case may be. Now, I say to do this, because this is by far 
my favorite objection handler at a listing presentation. Let's be honest. Do most people think all real estate agents do the same thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They don't think there's any yes. difference between you and Jimmy John down the street. They're the same thing. So they, so now you're at a listing presentation and they say, well, you know, I'm going to go with Jimmy John because they're only charging me this or their friend or whatever the case may be. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that's, I perfectly understand that. Now, let me ask you, here's a copy of my schedule. It shows you exactly what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, I'm prospecting in the morning and blah, 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 all these different things. Let me ask you, did Jimmy John give you a copy of their schedule? What are they going to say? No, 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 they didn't give me a copy of their schedule. Uh, can I tell you why that makes me a little bit nervous? Sure, they probably don't have one. See, the downfall of real estate is that you're an independent contractor, which means you can come and go as you please. You can work when you want, when you want to work. You don't have to work if you don't want to. That's the beauty of being a real estate agent. Now, let me ask you, for your largest financial transaction, do you want someone who kind of has a come and go as they please mentality or someone that's got a structured daily schedule? What are they going to say? What are they going to say? They want, a, they want somebody with a schedule, right? Great, exactly. Now, here's my plan of action that goes over specifically step-by-step -step what I'm going to do to get your home sold. Now, let me ask you, did Jimmy John give you a step-by-step -step plan of action or did they use a bunch of vague terms like they're going to do a ton of marketing? What did they do? What are they going to say probably? Right. What do most real estate agents do? Do they have a specific plan of action or do they just say they're going to do vague stuff like a ton of marketing? They just talk. Yeah, they're just vague. We're going to do a ton of marketing. We know a bunch of people, right? We're going to send it out to a bunch of places. It's going to be all over the place. We're going to get you tons of exposure. Vague. They don't. So they don't have a specific step-by-step -step plan of action? No, no, they don't. So let me ask you again, largest financial transaction. Do you want someone who's just kind of throwing things out there vaguely, or do you want someone with a specific plan of action? Well, I want someone with a specific plan of action, exactly. Let me ask you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's a list of all the affiliates involved in your transaction. Would you agree, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that this is a pretty large deal? Yes. There's a lot of hands that are gonna to touch your file. You should probably feel pretty comfortable with those people, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Here's all the people that are gonna be calling you. Here's all the people that are gonna be emailing you. Here's what they do. And if you have any questions, here's who you call. Did Jimmy John give you a list of all the people that are going to be holding your hand through this transaction? No. So, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me be honest with you. Based on where we're at so far, between me and Jimmy John, who seems a little more prepared to take your biggest financial transaction? What are they going to say? You. You, great. Maybe. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? Sign the contract, please. Hey, you forgot to ask the question. Would you rather have a real estate agent who's like a pit bull or a poodle? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Would you rather have a pit bull or a poodle protecting your equity? That is my favorite objection. Give them a copy of your schedule because no other agent's going to do that. And I know no other agent's gonna do that because I've been coaching for a while. And a lot of you don't have a schedule. <laughs> so that means the other agent couldn't have given them one. A plan of action, every agent's vague. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. You know what the lamest thing real estate agents do? This is the lamest thing real estate agents do. We're gonna put your property on 500 websites. frustration I get when I hear that. No, you're going to put it on the MLS. The MLS is going to put it on 500 websites. Anybody does that. That's not exclusive to you or your company. <clears throat> That's not impressive. So you're going to give them a schedule. You're going to give them a plan of action. You're going to give them a copy of all their affiliates, the largest financial transaction. They're going to look at the other person and go, they didn't give me any of this stuff. Then close, 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 close. 
Did they send you a pre-listing package to give you some information before we got together? No. Mr. Mr. Seller, come on. <clears throat> what are we doing here? It's clear that one of us is a professional and the other one probably does this part-time. I'm sure they're lovely people, but this is a business decision, correct? Correct. Make a business decision. Hire me. Sign the contract so I can help you get what you want the time that you want. Won't that be great? Yes. Sign the contract. So you have to be, sometimes you got to be a little aggressive. I wasn't mean. I was never mean to that person. I simply was telling them the truth. Did they provide you this? I gave them the opportunity. They could have said, well, yeah, they did. Of which I would be shocked. But the reason I do all three, just in case they do one. Well, they did give me a plan of action. Okay, cool. Good for them. But did they do a schedule? Nope. They give you the fillet. Nope. Okay. I always have a chance to hammer them down. And then the last thing that I would say to ever bring to a listing presentation that gives you a little extra help like that is if you go on an expired or a for sale by owner, print out the listing. If it is expired, print out the old listing for sale by owner, print out the current listing on Zillow, whatever it is, get a red pen, mark it up, cross some things out, make some big circles, write some notes, and then, and then take that and say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you know, I saw your previous listing. Okay. And I made a few notes. Don't give it to them, but just say, look, I made a few notes. And then put it down. So let's go and talk. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, my gosh, what did I do wrong? This guy, gal, just took my listing, wrote it up in pen. They got like, I mean, it looks like a bloody murder scene. I got to listen to them. Okay, sure. Tell me what I did wrong. Oh, mm. he just, just tears their heart out. It's wonderful. Questions on any of that stuff? <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, we could talk about objection handling. Well, I could talk about objection handling for a long time. Yeah, but what I wanted to do today was really just get repeat, approve, ask two questions, close. I really wanted to focus on that. And the last segment there of a couple of advanced things that you can do to make yourself stand out a little bit more. There's all kinds of stuff we can talk about, but I really just wanted to focus on those two things today. Okay. Robert. Questions, anything before we're, we wrap up? Yeah, Robert, this is Michael. Yes, Michael. Question. Uh, you, when we hear the, the, the top producers, the, most of the business, they get it from the database, people they know. When they handle the same objection, it's a little different than when you go to an expire to a person that you never know. What is the difference in the tonality? See, let's say there's somebody that you know, maybe a banker or somebody comparing with just an expire. I wouldn't, same, treat, right? I, I wouldn't treat it any differently. I go, because your database, you're not the only real estate agent they know. So if, if I go in there and my database, my past client, my center of influence says, yeah, Robert, you know what though? But the thing is, I just that price, I wouldn't go, oh, come on. You know, I mean, we've worked together before. I wouldn't do that. I would say, you know what, Michael, I, I understand, you know, the price is a little bit of a concern. That makes sense. Let me ask you. If I get your home sold in the next 30 days, I would just do the same process. I wouldn't change my tonality because if they were that convinced, loving, and grateful for me, they wouldn't give me an objection. If they weren't thinking about using somebody else, if they weren't questioning if I could do this correctly, they would have, it would have been a one-minute presentation. And we've all had them, right? Anyone that's been in the business for a while. Some of you haven't been in the business that long. But if you've been in the business for a long time, you've had it. You've had those come list me calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send it over. But anyone else, they give me an objection. That means they're questioning if I can do the job. So I'm going to treat it the same way. I'm going to treat it the same exact way. Everybody deserves the same level of energy and intensity, no matter who they are. And if a database person thinks that I was too intense with them, then I would just I would just go back to them and say, look, it's just because I'm treating you 
this is a big decision for you. This is your biggest financial transaction. You deserve the highest amount of energy and intensity that I have. Wouldn't you agree? And they were like, yeah, that makes sense. That's why you hire me. I mean, if you want, I can come in and sweatpants and a t-shirt and hat on backwards and, you know, six pack of beer and we can just hang out for a little bit and sign the contract. I mean, we could do that too. Do you want that? No. Okay. Come on. Now that we signed the go. contract, now that we've signed the contract, now we can go do all those things. Yes, Dave. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I think it goes a long way too, if you want referrals, mm -hmm. because yeah. if you come in with that hat, you know, backwards and stuff, they're not going to send you to people that, uh, that they know. That's it. It's a business. It is a business decision. As much as they loved you, it is a business decision. Very good. All right. Well, that's